Welcome back to the Pod Slice. Today we will summarize Huberman Lab podcast about ADHD. Dr. Andrew Huberman, a neurobiologist and ophthalmologist at Stanford School of Medicine, talks about attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and how everyone, not just those with ADHD, can improve their focus and ability to attend. He emphasizes the importance of proper diagnosis by a qualified professional and explains that ADHD has a strong genetic component. ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects both children and adults. It is characterized by symptoms such as hyperactivity, impulsivity, and inattention. These symptoms can significantly impact an individual's ability to function in everyday life, including school, work, and social interactions. Dr. Huberman also explains that ADHD has nothing to do with intelligence and highlights the increase in the number of adults with ADHD, which could be due to smartphone use. Attention, focus, and concentration are the same thing for the purpose of this discussion, and everyone can improve their attentional capacity. Dr. Huberman discusses various interventions that can help, including drug-based tools, behavioral tools, diet and supplementation, and brain-machine interface devices like transcranial magnetic stimulation. It's important to note that proper diagnosis of ADHD is crucial in determining the most effective interventions. In individuals with ADHD, impulse control is separate because it requires limiting perception. They have poor attention and high levels of impulsivity, which can make them easily distracted and annoyed. People with ADHD can have challenges with time perception and working memory. Dopamine is responsible for focus, motivation, and changes in perception. Two main types of circuits related to ADHD and attention are the default mode network and the task network. These circuits normally interact and communicate with each other, but disruptions in this interaction can lead to challenges with attention and focus. Pharmaceutical drugs used to treat ADHD increase dopamine levels in the brain to help coordinate these neural circuits, but it is important to use them responsibly and under the guidance of a healthcare professional. Dr. Huberman discusses the history of using stimulants to increase focus and energy, such as caffeine and nicotine, and emphasizes the importance of early treatment for ADHD. He also raises the question of the role of diet in ADHD treatment, and a randomized controlled trial suggests that eliminating foods to which children have allergies can dramatically improve their symptoms of ADHD. Ingestion of omega-3 fatty acids, particularly EPA, can also allow adults with ADHD or mild attention deficit issues to function well on lower doses of medication. Dr. Huberman emphasizes the importance of understanding whether a treatment is mediating or modulating a process, as drugs like Ritalin and Adderall tap into the circuitries and the neurochemistries that mediate attention and focus, but they are not the only alternatives for treatment. Other alternatives and some behavioral alternatives that are effective exist. Dr. Huberman provides practical tools for improving attention and mental clarity. One tool he suggests is open monitoring, which involves dilating your gaze to access panoramic vision and processing more visual information at a higher frame rate. This can reduce attentional blinks and improve focus. Attentional blinks occur when we focus on one thing and miss other information as a result. Dr. Huberman also discusses the relationship between blinks and our perception of time. Our perception of time changes based on how often we blink. Dr. Huberman discusses the relationship between blinking, dopamine, and time perception. Dopamine controls attention and focus. When dopamine levels go up, people tend to overestimate how long something lasted, while lower dopamine levels lead to underestimating time intervals. Individuals with ADHD have difficulty managing their time, as their dopamine levels are lower, leading to underestimation of time intervals. Dr. Huberman also discusses the role of brain-machine interface devices like transcranial magnetic stimulation for enhancing focus and treating ADHD. TMS allows for the stimulation of certain neural circuits, creating the impulse to move or engage in certain behaviors or thought patterns without making the decision to do so. This technology is being used to stimulate portions of the prefrontal cortex that engage task-directed focus states in children and adults with ADHD. Another emerging technology is transcranial direct current stimulation, which involves the application of a low electrical current to the scalp to enhance brain function. While these technologies are still being researched, they hold great promise for the future of ADHD treatment. Dr. Huberman emphasizes the importance of maintaining focus in all areas of life, as it is proportional to success in every endeavor. He suggests practicing mindfulness meditation, which has been shown to improve attention and reduce symptoms of ADHD as well as setting specific goals and focusing on one task at a time. He also recommends exercise, 
which has been shown to improve cognitive function and attention, and getting enough sleep, as sleep deprivation can have negative effects on attention and overall brain function. In conclusion, Dr. Andrew Huberman provides valuable insights into ADHD and the science of focus. While ADHD has a strong genetic component, everyone can improve their attentional capacity through various interventions, including drug-based tools, behavioral tools, diet and supplementation, and brain-machine interface devices like TMS and TDCS. It is important to use these tools responsibly and under the guidance of a healthcare professional. Maintaining focus through practices like mindfulness meditation, goal-setting, exercise, and sleep is crucial for success in all areas of life.